sorry that you couldn't make it yesterday, Honor, but uh, I'm sure, as Joanna told you, the whole uh, theater loved the, the movie, the resounding uh, reactions. Thank you. I feel like I was there. It sucks that I'm not. I'm in rainy Edinburgh right now, and it's pissing it out, but I'm really um, I feel like I was there, but that's fine. Nice. Um, so I'd love to start off just by uh, getting you guys to talk about how your collaboration has evolved since the part one. Honor, it was different, wasn't it, from part one? I was saying this in the Q&A last night. I don't know if you were there still at the Q&A, but, I, you know, with, with, uh, with part one, Honor was so brave to, to um, agree to do the film because she, she didn't, I didn't show her any script or any scenario. So you, I'm right, Honor, you didn't know where the story was going with part one. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and because it was, it, it was necessary for Julie's naivety and, and, and because Julie, or I for that matter, who was in a similar relationship at that time, had no idea what was going to happen next. So it, it was important uh, to ask Honor to, yeah, do be, sort of be led blindly in a way through the story of part one. Um, and, then in, and then with part two, I showed you, didn't I? I showed you the story. You knew you had a much better idea of where you were going, which was true for Julie. She had you know, uh, gain strength really through this relationship and the loss of the relationship. So it was, the, I think the process was quite different from one and two. It's very, very easy to forget. Honor, I don't know how you remember it. That's, no, that, that's bang on. I think it's, there almost was much less discussion for the second one. We really did just find our feet and hold hands and just kind of do it together. We just kind of leapt into it, I think, and, it, yeah, there was just less, um, yeah, less sort of verbal preparation. But the first one, we definitely, we looked at letters together, handwritten letters, and diaries, and looked at pictures, which was really beautiful. Because I could really, I could get a sense, I could literally sort of smell and see what Joanna was writing about and really get a, a, a vibe of what she was like at that age, my age as well. So, but with the second one, it was less, it just got, for me anyway, it's more organic over time. It just got more natural. We just sort of slid into it. It just found it, it's curve of the wood. And I think, yeah, I mean, for me, it just got easier. Yeah. But there was quite a gap in between. So mm. we're talking about a number of years. So it's very hard to put in a few words, isn't it? How that experience mm. was from 2009, no, 2017, when we shot the first one. I think that's right. Or even 2019. I forget now. To 2019. So, and you know, you had you went to Africa. You know, there were so many things happening uh, mm. in that gap between. And I, I was quite worried about that gap between because I didn't know how any of us would feel and think when we got to making part two. I, 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 I really didn't want to lose the momentum. You reach such a momentum when you make a film, and then you finish the shoot, and then everything you know, quietens down. And I didn't want to quieten down. I wanted to keep all our energies going. Um, mm. Of course, that would have been impossible. It would have been too exhausting in a way. But um, yeah, it was strange to try and sort of keep everything afloat in that, in, that, in that gap. Yeah, I remember being afraid that I was not quite going to find it as easy to get back in that zone as I did. I don't remember even on the first day, I was like, God, I'm not, I don't, I wonder, I wonder what I can do to to slip into those shoes again and it it did happen pretty instantaneously I did I do remember a moment I think I went to the loo or something I was like okay no actually this is this is really fine and I know I, I think we all know I mean we we collectively don't re you know really know what we're doing but we all know exactly what we're doing together and I felt yeah it, it became very easy pretty pretty immediately like, yeah, you seem to come back into it. It seemed very, from the outside, uh, very, uh, very natural somehow. And I think you'd observe yeah. so much with part one. I was really taken aback with how much you observed the process of making part one and that you brought to Julie as a filmmaker with those scenes when you're shooting a uh, film. With uh, with Harris and Ariane and uh, yeah and and then I, I realized and I think you said something that you've been observing me 
shooting part one. Anyway, it was incredible what you seem to seem to take in. About yeah, it. there there are incredible uh, layers <laughs> of self reference with this project, obviously, and I I know that um, the making of part one was an inspiration, as well as Joanna, your own thesis film in school. What it and means to you to revisit um, uh, your earlier work and kind of reclaim it in a way and uh, honor what that was like for you to um, sort of inhabit this uh, younger version of Joanna again. I really, I really got a sense of, I saw some footage that Joanna had done and, and I grew up watching Caprice, which Joanna made with my mom when she was my lordy, which was Joanna's student film, which we make a different version of in the second soon here. But it, I, I grew up watching that and grew up watching kind of getting a proper air of this person's life when she was younger. And again, I grew up with Joanna being a godmother. And so I think it, yeah, it was just wonderful to have these discussions, these really deep conversations during lunch breaks with Joanna talking about where we were with how we felt about body image, how we felt about boyfriends and how we felt about, you know, isolation within social groups and we seem to map on many like most things almost everything we seem to sort of have very similar experiences so it, it, yeah it, I felt so welcomed and safe to have the privilege to represent what you are and that's yeah that it just happens to be like that what, was there a moment on set uh, for either of you or in your conversations offset um, where, Honor, you were surprised by uh, something in Joanna's direction, something that stuck out, or Joanna, you were surprised by something in Honor's performance? I was surprised at how little, how trusting Joanna was of me to, to do my own direction. And I think she would give me so little so little instruction it was so freeing it's also very daunting but it was very freeing you know we would sort of go into a scene and Joanna would say well you know I think this is a, this is the time where you maybe you confront Anthony about something you confront him about and I said oh what were we what am I confronting him about she says whatever you fancy whatever comes to you and it was so fun to sort of sit down and be like oh, you know, what say? Do you know what? and then it's sort of like rolling and you're like oh god I don't know what I'm gonna say I don't know what I'm gonna say and then it just flow it just comes and it's different every take and it was just very yeah that surprised me but in a really wonderful way it's how how much of a collaboration it was it it felt like such a teamwork project but you know with the amazing leadership of Joanna but you know, I was so complimented by how much of a collaboration it was but I think that's because your um, your instincts are so good, and you. I mean, I think often our communication was wordless in a way because mm -hmm. there would be the situation that I'd set up uh, for a particular scene, and then often what I like to do is not say too much for a first take, and and see what happens. Of course, there's a, there's a map, there's quite a precise map to what we're doing, but then there's this uh, sort of unknowingness, which is always so interesting to me, and kind of scary in a way, because you think, well, this, I might, this scene may not work uh, at all. I may not, you know, me as the director might not get, you know, get, get it right, or I might not catch the scene, but, it, 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 but it's exciting to, to sometimes see what happens and then to shape something as it goes along. So, you know, if there are kind of eight takes, then maybe by take five, there's, there's some, we're taking some pieces from what Honor has done and whoever she's collaborating with in the scene. And then, I don't know, it's just constant sort of sculpting of, of moments in a way. And because as Honor said, there, there was such an understanding between her and I about who this person um, is, uh, yeah, the, 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 there was detail there, but it didn't necessarily have to be spoken. And when you have such a, a fluid process, uh, so dedicated to discovery, um, how do you balance that with um, 
structure and staying disciplined and precise, and especially when you're uh, shooting on film and have uh, so many collaborators working with you? Well, it's that back to that balance that's interesting, really. Where where I yeah I'm I'm not at all interested in in a kind of improvisational quality. I'm not I'm not really that interested in improvisation. Yet, if you analyze what I'm doing, the actors are improvising on many levels. But I don't, I I I I I I want to create a scene as if it's been scripted. But if as if it's, I haven't thought about it like this before, but is it as if it's scripted in the moment, but it's not a blueprint for something. It's not something that's been thought about and worked on. So by the time you're shooting it, it lost, has lost all the energy in life. I want to create that life in those moments when we're shooting the scene, but I don't want it to feel that it's just accidental that we've, we've got to where we've got to. So it's a, it's a very odd thing because I, I, I kind of hate that style and I want it uh, to be, yeah, I kind of want to yeah, create something with, with a lot of precision. So it, it, yeah, it's just a constant balance of, of that. And, and as always in these situations, trying to describe what we do now, sitting here in a completely different um, circumstance, it, it, it's just very hard. I mean, don't you think, Honor? It's very hard to, to, because it's so intense, the process, and there's so many conversations, and, I, and, and it's so intense that I just forget afterwards. It's, it's like having some kind of dream and it's very clear when you wake up in the morning and then you just you end up just having little wisps of it you can't catch it I can't catch it now I mean I'm happy to try to do that for you today but it's yeah <laughs> that's exactly how I feel and we talked about this in Canada I remember everyone's asking such fantastic very deep very precise questions and we're sitting there like I wish I could explain it to you I have absolutely no idea so I'm going to do my best but it's a but it was like a will of the wisp situation where just can't quite pin it down but we'll do our best but it's so hard it's tricky because again it's it's wordless it's completely like unspoken was there any kind of uh chink in your guy's armor that this film made you aware of or something that this film motivates you to uh pursue creatively, professionally, personally, or, you know, improve, work on? Anna, do you want to go? Um, it really helps me to be a little bit more spontaneous with myself, a little bit more, and just not be afraid of plans going wrong and not be afraid of things not going exactly to plan and not being unexpected. I think it really... It helped with my courage a lot. It really did. I, I, I recognized that I came out of this whole experience just going, life's just going to do what it's going to do. And that's when you just got to enjoy every minute and go with the flow and improvise everything and do your best. I, I learned a lot more than that, but that's what I think at the moment. And that seems like a, a really valuable uh, life mindset too, life philosophy, yeah. not just for yeah. filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I think for me, my, my, what I, my, one of my takeouts is sort of more practical in a way in that I really enjoyed uh, the, the shooting of, well, both parts within a studio situation, mostly in the studio, not on, on location. Creating a world, inventing a world in a studio um, was really exciting to me again, because that's what I discovered when I was at film school and I'd lost... I'd lost uh, that uh, I don't know, not, it's not confidence, not, lost that desire anyway to create a film in that way, uh, to create artificial settings, but with, uh, with all the emotion and feeling of, of real life, but just in a different way. Yeah, yeah, the combination, because I think when I was at film school, when I made Caprice, the graduation I made with uh, Tilda, uh, I, I hadn't yet, uh, I wasn't, uh, hadn't sort of developed enough my ideas in cinema to be able to, and all, well also the, the hadn't, uh, I wasn't able to access my own feelings and emotions in a way that I can do now, not easily, but I can certainly do more now. But combining the artificiality of the setting of Caprice and the film within the film, for example, in part two, 
um, but but doing it with uh, with what I've learned through life so far, that 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 to me is exciting and something I want to take forward. Well, it definitely manifests on screen. Congratulations, uh, both of you on the film. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.